Welcome back, father lovers, to a brand new episode of Last Call at Pemberton's The Best Damn How I Met Your Father podcast on the See, internet. There you go again. Best damn. We can't yeah. prove this yet. We have no proof. See, John, it, it is not on us to prove it. It is on everybody else to prove it if they don't want to believe it. That's how right. it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> tell us in the comments section or, you know, go to one of the places where you can leave a comment or yep. video chat us something Go to Twitter, go to Instagram, At let us know, call, H-I-M-Y-M. <laughs> are we or are we not the best at what we do? <clears throat> I, I, I'm sure some at least out there would think so. I really do. I really do. Secondly, <laughs> are we handsome men or are we uggos? <laughs> are we I'm... hideous shuds of a person? I mean, that's probably why the majority of people listen and don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> we have the face for radio. We do. We do. Uh, so I am one of your hosts, Josh, here with my best friend, John. Uh, dude, how are you doing, man? I mean, I am the best that I can be. I mean, I'm not drunk, but I'm I mean, not, you know. That's something, you know. I'm one not, of the, not One of these drunk. days, people. One, one of these days. We'll do that. <laughs> dude, I'm so drunk? Yeah. You know. Oh man, that would, ooh, I don't know if I would want to do that. Maybe like we we talked about before. Maybe we'll just be like a, a like an after hours type thing, and we'll put it <laughs> out for Patreon. People can come and watch it. Could you imagine we do it and we forget to hit record? That would be something. Um, they wouldn't be able to see it, <laughs> but we would have the memories, John. We would have the <laughs> memories. Well, thanks All for right. the memories. Yes. So we are here to talk. How I Met Your Father, season two, episode fifteen. Working Girls. Woohoo! This one aired June thirteenth of two thousand and twenty-three. Directed by Pamela Fryman. Pifra. That's right. Written by Daniel and Matthew Libman. Uh, they pre. <laughs> no, they <laughs> they previously wrote uh, season two, episode two, Midwife Crisis, the one with Megan Trainer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a good episode. Uh, and they work as producers on the show. They also wrote and produced on shows like Dr. Ken, The Mick, and Solar Opposites, and wrote on Robot Chicken, Metalocalypse, and Happy Endings. I'm not yeah. going to lie, you said Dr. Ken, and I went Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. <laughs> no, not quite not quite that. Uh, this is the Ken Jong show. I don't know if you ever watched that. I did not watch it, but I knew it existed. Yeah, because, you know, before he became an actor, he was a doctor. Was he? Yeah, in real life. Legitimate? Legitimate, yeah. What? Yeah, he's talked about it uh, like on a few interview shows and stuff that I've seen. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's fascinating stuff. He's an interesting guy. Uh, all right, so the summary for this episode, Sophie and Ellen get assigned to a work project together. Sid surprises Hannah in L.A. Charlie and Vale try to make the most of their time with Jesse after he gets a bad psychic reading. That's a good synopsis. Yeah, I think it hits all the, all the important points. For what's going on in this episode. All right, John. So there is really no combined like opening that has all the. It just goes right into the storylines. Yeah, it goes right into storylines. I noticed. So where the, do you want to start? Well, I wanted to kind of start with the. I'm not going to say it's the easy storyline, but let's talk about the short storyline, which is the Jesse, Val, and Charlie. Okay. Which is weird. So. <laughs> For some weird reason, Valentina is doing this reading at the bar. She's got a psychic yeah. that comes into the bar, yeah. which I thought was weird because why didn't she just take her to her apartment? Yeah, that I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know why she specifically brought it to the bar, but made for, I don't know. Made for more funny, interesting things. I but I, I love that as because like Jesse's like very skittish about it. And I understand oh, yeah. that. He's because super skeptical. Yeah. I'm the same way when it comes to a lot of uh, psychic stuff. Because I'm like, you can't tell me that every one of them is no. a true psychic. No. Like, and I understand, like, there are... Ooh, do you, do you mind if I demonstrate my psychic abilities for a second? Because I, I do this. This okay. is really funny. Hmm. I see that somebody's passed away recently in your life. You're... You're dealing with some financial struggles. <clears throat> and people, yeah. I mean, it's it's how they feed into it that allows them to... I mean, it became really popular with that whole John... Remember John Edwards? He had that TV oh, yeah. show. Crossing over. 
Yeah, and they found out that he was all bullshit, full of shit. Bullshit. You know? And, like, there's a lot of people out there like that who just know how to read people and read the room and and things like that. And like Jesse says, you know, they says vague things. And unfortunately, a lot of people will fall for that. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's funny because when Charlie says or when Jesse says that, Charlie goes, well, she told me I was going to round the corner and find prosperity. Yeah. And he's like, and I believe that that's true. And as soon as he walks around the bar, he finds 20 bucks. Yeah. And I'm like, well, some patron ain't paying in their tab. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, uh, uh, <laughs> some some uh, poor schmuck lost some money, or like Jesse said, maybe she planted it there. Who knows? We I don't mean, know. That is true. Yeah, but I love that. So Jesse allows her to do a reading for him, and apparently, she tells him he's gonna die that night. Yeah, that like he's doomed and will die. Now, here's my thing: if she is this fraud, who and he, the way that Jesse kept saying, you know, that's how the, she gets you to come back. You know, she tells you the things you want to hear. That's how she gets you to come back. Why would she say these things to him? True. You know what I mean? Why wouldn't True. she tell him things to get him to come back if that's her whole thing? The only thing I could think of is because Pemberton's is a smaller bar. She heard Jesse shit talk her. Maybe. And she gave him a bad reading so that he would no longer go around her. I mean, it's very possible, but, you know, some stuff does happen. Um, I mean, it's <laughs> coincidental yeah. stuff, maybe, but yeah, I don't, yeah. you know. Very coincidental. <laughs> I mean, so, okay, so the sword <laughs> falling off the wall, that could have been a loose nail. Could have been. It could have just, you know, it's up there so much that it shakes all the time. I'm but here's the thing. Coincidence, right, when there, when there are that many put together doesn't feel like coincidence, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you you saying that there's some Final Destination shit going on? Maybe. I mean, they literally make that reference, too. They do. <laughs> I think it was um, when, the, when the light fell from the ceiling. I mean, that was that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and the stuff kept happening, like, right where he would be. That is true. That's the other My thing. My favorite one is at the end of the episode when he's sitting on the couch. He's eating the, whatever, and he's the eating peanuts the or whatever. Pretzel, yeah, whatever it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he starts choking and he's like, what if it's specific, uh, Pacific time? Yeah, yeah, that was a, a it was a good way to end that piece of, of the story, which I thought was really funny. Um, I want to talk a little real quick about, uh, apparently, Vale went on a date with Andrew Giuliani. Yeah. Like, like have you ever seen this guy? He's not a good guy. No. Not a good-looking man. But, I mean, is he any relation to Mayor Giuliani? Yeah, it's his son. Oh, well, then I wouldn't assume he'd be a good-looking man. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to Mayor Giuliani or anything. I mean, you know. Oh, I mean, Rudy's not. I mean, I don't know how people back in the day had the hots for him. Even even when he was mayor back in the day. Uh, Listen, I'm going to say no, this with you. all due respect. It's the position of power thing. I think you're probably right, yeah. I mean. Because, I mean, I'm, when I would think of Mayor Giuliani, if I'm thinking of the right guy... He had a receding hairline that was starting to like bald out a little bit. Glasses. Yeah. He was he was shorter. He wasn't yeah. fat, but he was definitely not thin. Yes. Yeah. I'm, and and he just got worse looking at as he got older. <laughs> I mean, think think about it this way, man. Napoleon. It's true. Yeah. People you're... thought Napoleon was an attractive man. He was like four foot six. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh... Well, I mean, I know he was like at least five foot, but I mean, like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was a short guy. He was a very he short was. guy. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm, so I love that they get him, they, that Charlie and Vale buy him uh, a last meal, and it's lasagna Alfredo El Forno, and as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, man, now I want that. <laughs> that so what is delicious. the El Elf, Forno, Elf, the last word? The El Forno? I think that's cheese, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure. You but just I think, think that, it sounds good. It just You, you were in it, lasagna. Mean, it's lasagna Alfredo. Like, those two things. I'm in, man. <laughs> Oh, Josh is like, I don't know where I need to go. Kill me now. Give me that meal. Yeah, I mean, I whenever I go to, because I've heard the 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 El Forno part before. Because whenever I go to uh, Olive Garden, I get the I think it's five cheese ziti El Forno. Okay. So that's why I think I, I, it might have something to either do with the sauce or the cheese or something. But um, I don't know. It just sounded good to me. 
I could go Ladies for Ladies and nice, gentlemen, nice if you know what lasagna. El Forno is, please go on to yeah. one of the social medias, Last Call, H-I-M-Y-M. Let us know if you know what El Forno is. I'm a cook by nature, and I don't know what the fuck El Forno means. Don't sue <laughs> True. me. It's true. Don't, yeah, also, it's switched it up today. I'm not doing Rockstar. I'm doing what you got M&Ms. today? M&M's. There you go. M&M's. Uh, here you go. Hit us up. Hit us up. Yeah. Trying something new. Sweet. Like I like a good it. boy. I got a bottle of water. Bottle of water and hidden somewhere in the, in his house is another rock star waiting to be drank. <laughs> there it is. Rock star. Hit us up with sponsorships. I'm going to keep tagging you guys. <laughs> going to keep tagging you. <laughs> I mean, listen, rock star. I drink so much of your product. The least you could do is at least like our stuff, at least. You know who's been liking our our uh, our tweets lately? The, the episode tweets? Who? Kim Cattrall. No way. Hells yeah, bro. Ah, future Sophie, what's up? That's what I'm saying, man. It's dope. She she's Special pretty shout awesome. Shout out to Kim Cattrall. What she's up? pretty she's pretty awesome. She's pretty awesome. Uh okay, so Vale and Charlie they help Jesse do this bucket list thing. Okay. Yeah, which I thought was kind of cute. Yeah, it had some interesting stuff, but I caught something on there that made me kind of like think in terms of the show. One of his bucket list items is to become a dad. And I thought that was really interesting. Oh, shit. And, it, and I wondered, is this meant as like a tease for the possibility of it being Jesse? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, how, they like to constantly tease. Oh, is it going to be this guy? Is it going to be this guy? They like to do that. So that, that's they stuck that in there on purpose, obviously. You know, that's fair. Now, see, I had a different route. I was going to go with this. I have a question for you. Okay. You're told you have 24 hours to live. <clears throat> Clearly, yeah. you have to get your affairs in order really quickly in that aspect. But if you had to, if you <clears throat> were to die in 24 hours, what is one last thing you would want to do? Skydiving. With or without the parachute at that does, point. At that point, it doesn't matter. But I was going to say, it's not like it matters at that point. But I mean, I think I'd like to be able to enjoy the experience afterward. Be like, I did that, so maybe with. <laughs> but yeah, skydiving. That would that's that's definitely one that I always wanted to do. You went what? a very more uh, <laughs> respectable <laughs> way than I went. Okay, what's yours? Uh, I was gonna go to Walmart. I was gonna shoplift a bunch of shit. And then I was going to go to a bank and I was going to rob a bank for as much money as I possibly could and then go back to my bank and deposit it and then make sure my kid is taken care of after I'm gone. Well, better hope that they don't catch on to that because they'll just take that money back. I mean, they would have to somehow link it up and I'm, you know, this is what you, do. The... you bury that shit. And then leave a note for your kid for when he's like 21. <laughs> this will, is where it is. <laughs> make sure that the money and location ends up somewhere where only you're going to know. Nice. Just make sure my kid's taken care of. <laughs> like, oh, shit, I need some rent money. <laughs> Dig a hole. <laughs> my kid's like, dad said he left me $24,000. And you're like, best I can do is this five bucks. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to need that. Sorry. <laughs> uh i also noticed something because you mentioned before about the sword the sword falling off yeah and how, how like so like it sticks into the ground you know when when they go back to the apartment at midnight the sword's still there it's a real quick shot they just like they, they pan by it real fast but the sword is still there sticking oh, yeah. out sticking into the floor they yeah never i thought that was kind of funny nobody picked yeah. it up yeah, nobody picked it up. I thought that was a, a cool. It's 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 like a blink and miss it kind of a thing, which I thought was uh, was pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, gotta get gotta get those last wishes taken care of. It's true, uh, and yeah, and then we already talked about how he uh, you know chokes at the end and then runs out saying maybe it's Pacific time. Okay. Maybe yeah, there's that. That that's uh, you said specific. Whatever it's it is a specific time, John. <laughs> It's, it's a very specific. It's a very specific time. Oh, <laughs> uh, so let's uh, talk about how Sid got on a plane. He did, and went to LA. Yeah, it's interesting, man. We, I feel like we don't ra- we rarely get Hannah two episodes in a row. Very rarely, and yeah. usually when they do, it's because they're building a story arc there. And I think they are. Oh, I, I very much are. so. 
This, this episode showed me firsthand that they're not going to be together much longer. They'll be they'll be broken up by the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. I got some I got some things to say at some point as we go through it. So, uh, but yeah, he uh, surprises her in the office. I love the way like uh, Mister Sex Machine. Yeah, that's right, baby. <laughs> He's just laying there like she had no idea. I thought that was really funny. Um, Sid. He says uh, it's not what he envisioned L.A. doctor life to be. And we get this little, like, fantasy sequence. It reminded me of, like, Scrubs fantasies. You know what I mean? That's something, 100% something like J.D. would, would fantasize. 100%. Um, but it's, like, sexy model-looking people uh, being sexy with each other, eating sushi. And I noticed something. I don't know if you caught this. It's not an operating table or a chair. It's a surfboard. No, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's a it's a freaking surfboard. <laughs> no, man. Well, it was funny because you you bring up the whole it was like a Scrubs fantasy. I've seen some weird videos in my time, and that was kind of like a uh, really weird fantasy slash porn kind of yes. thing. Yeah, I mean, it definitely teetered on like he he's watching too much late night cable, right? And that's what <laughs> I was gonna say, like Skinamax. Thank you. Yeah, like, I was, and that's what I was thinking. It was like. Soft core, but not so soft core. Yeah. But I'm like, like they were about to rip some clothes off. Oh yeah. In, in the next scene. <laughs> yeah, like first off, like you go to the doctor's office, like, and you know this firsthand as well as I do. So you go to the doctor's, you're gonna get like a two, three hundred dollar bill anyway. They better start throwing in some fucking sushi. Right. <laughs> Give me all that. No, I don't like sushi, so no thank you. Guys do I. Sushi. How about a veggie plant? How about a lasagna Alfredo El Forno? <laughs> I, uh, last I'll time I went to the doctor, I'm sitting there. I had to get a physical for my job, and the lady's like, "You're a you're a hefty boy." And I said, "Oh my god, really?" I said, "Is that a professional medical diagnosis?" I said, "Because usually they just use the word obese." It's true. And. I would have been like, oh, my God, are you are you serious? I need a mirror right now. <laughs> so How did this happen? I had a moment at work the other day that would have made you laugh. So for those of you who don't know what I do, uh, I stopped working security. I'm working as a forklift operator. I'm currently working in a warehouse that manufactures engines for semis. Well, we send the product to the factory to build. Uh, so I load the trailers currently. Well, the other day I was loading a trailer and my boss comes over the radio and goes, hey, John, make sure you're watching the weight. And without missing a beat, I cue my radio and I go, are you talking my personal weight or the truck weight? Because both of those are totally different. <laughs> and she came back with um, the truck weight. And I was like, oh, so it's OK that I'm fat. Just don't overload the truck. And she goes... Yeah, <laughs> like she, had no, like, she had no idea how to respond. She didn't. Oh, that's too funny. Uh, I love taking people off guard like that. It's, it's good times. It's, it's great. All but right. Yeah, so I don't know what he expected L.A. Yeah. doctors to be like, but I mean, yeah. we all know they're no different. Yeah, I mean, probably higher bill for that uh, matter. Probably. Um, Hannah suggests uh, going to a work party. She she's got this work party and it said, you know, he's like, no, I don't want you to miss that. We'll go to it. You know, I want to experience L.A. through you, you know, and then we meet her. Uh, colleague, the guy who they're throwing this this party for, he just passes boards. Just Eli. Passes boards. Name is Eli. I do not like him. I mean, I don't necessarily have a problem with him, but I could see. I could see there being issues if she stayed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I feel like it could become a thing. Listen, um, I'm going to say it like this. If I was Sid, can't say I wouldn't have at least told him, like, straight out, stay the fuck away from my woman. I mean, he was less subtle about it. But he was very more passive-aggressive about it, but he was not very nice to that guy. Throughout he the wasn't. Episode. He really wasn't. And, I mean, he didn't do anything. Eli didn't do anything. It's not yeah. so much. Okay, so my thing is, I I overread it, and I'm, I'm admitting this as the viewer. I overread it, especially when they do, like, the inside joke right away. 
Like they're like, oh, don't be like so and so. I'm like, well, I mean, fuck you and your pretentious the, laugh. They're friends and colleagues, and they've been working together for a while. John, what you have to remember, think about Taylor. I know. I mean, if you were on the other side of that, shouldn't you think the same thing about her then? Listen. I'm just saying. I admitted that what he was doing was not, it was not cheating. I'm just I saying. said it was, but hold on, because there's a little bit of a difference. It was just a text conversation. Now, granted. And? Just because they work together doesn't mean anything. You're see, you're conflating it. You're you're putting yourself in Sid's shoes and conflating it when there's literally no proof of anything. True. I have think you, it's because ha, I know that I've never, been in a very similar situation, say, and I know what happened. Have you ever laughed and giggled with uh, with a coworker before? Only who you, you, who you weren't gonna sleep with, because I know I have. I mean, <laughs> you guys just ignore my comment. I mean, if if I'm the only person who you've ever laughed and giggled with, I mean, I'm, that's a little sad, but you know, it I is mean, what it is. No, I've definitely laughed and giggled with coworkers before, but not like I've never, for one, thrown an inside joke in front of another coworker and then continuously laughed for like three minutes and then been like, at least not try to fill them in. The fact that he's like that, Sid was like, you know. Somebody tell me who Daberman is so that I can understand. And then apparently nobody did. That yeah. does, they, that the fact that Hannah didn't at that point explain it because she doesn't explain it until the very end no. of the episode. I don't understand why. Like, I, I I'm curious about what the rest of the episode or the rest of that scene was like. Oh yeah, it had to be you awkward know? as fuck. Yeah, because like, how long were they standing there? Well, not to mention, okay, so this is what went through my head. So I'm going to jump to the end of this one for a second. So they cover, come back to it at the end, and they start talking about him at the end of the episode. Yeah. And, you know, she leans in, and she's like, he shit his pants. Yeah. And I'm like, they were at a fucking party when that happened. Yeah. So did the party end so he could go and change? Or did he stand around in shit pants? Well, maybe he just, like, went into the bathroom, cleaned up, threw some scrubs on it, like some scrub bottoms on it. I, I mean, that could have been as well. We don't know yeah. where the party happened. He could have been at home, even. I mean, I guess it's possible. Uh, but I mean, I like, <laughs> and then and then I thought to myself, because we worked with someone who shit themselves. <laughs> oh, my God, we totally did. And all I could think about was how he come, like, awkwardly walking into the kitchen like a penguin and was like, I need to leave. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Daverman. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So they go to this party, and it get it just gets more and more awkward for Sid throughout the night. Listen, I first off, I love the game they were playing. The game is very interesting. The, I like I, it kind of reminds me of the game that we play, where you take and you do the the remote romantic interest. Yeah. But like they're like, oh, you take a character and you try to diagnose them. And yeah. he's like, oh, you know, Tom Cruise, Philadelphia, AIDS. AIDS. Yeah, he, he, like, he takes it way too, like, literal. <laughs> well, it was really sad because, like, obviously he went to a different person, different movie, and it was going to be AIDS again. Yeah, it was Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club. That's AIDS. what it was. Yeah. Uh, but it would have been really funny if he didn't went to Tom Hanks again. I would have been like, Tom, did Tom Hanks, Hanks do another. Oh, AIDS. Yeah. I forgot about I was like, did Tom Hanks do another movie where he had AIDS? I mean, they never come right out and tell you that it's AIDS, but I mean. I mean, she did, at least. They could no, have. No, she never says she has AIDS. She just well, says no, she has. No, uh, I don't I don't mean that it was like stated, but it's it's heavily implied that oh, that's yeah. what she died from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Spoiler for Forrest Gump, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. There's, there's somebody sitting watching the podcast right now who's like, oh, great fucking spoiled forest gump a movie that's what 25 years old or some shit i love you jenny like come on <laughs> but uh then he he she brings up hannah brings up that he's a bartender uh and i like that she doesn't like minimize it you know she doesn't make it seem like oh he's just a bartender no like she's she's proud of the, that fact i thought it was weird though about. that she announced him as a bartender and not a bar owner that is yeah that's true um 
Because I I'm, thought about that. I'm going to say this now uh, because it's something that I, I, I have in my notes later on. But I think it's because at this point, she hasn't decided to go to New York yet. I don't think she makes that decision until literally seconds before she says it. I kind of, and, and we'll talk more about it when we get to that scene. That's fair. That's why I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's why. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, you know, she does say it that maybe she thinks about it that way because maybe she feels like he could do that anywhere. He could be a bartender anywhere. And so that's maybe how she rationalizes it in her head that it's okay mm-hmm. for him to leave. Was it the last episode we were talking about when <clears throat> we were talking about him going to LA and I was like, you know, he he owns this business. Like it's mm-hmm. not just easy to, you know. Yeah. It's it's and I mean it's still in that aspect in my mind too, where I'm like, it's easier for her. And I I shouldn't say that. It's not easy for either one of them to stop what they're doing and go the other way. Yeah. But at the same time. He's a business owner with an established business mm-hmm. and a clientele that he would literally have to just, you know, what do you tell them? Sorry, you can't come to my bar anymore. I'm moving. I mean, he just sells the bar. That's what he would have to do. And either True. the bar closes down or somebody else keeps it open and sell, you know, he, he sells it to. Those are really the options. I mean, True. But you, I mean, it wouldn't be Pemberton's anymore. It would be something different. I mean, theoretically, he could sell the name. I mean, he could. I don't know yeah. that I would. It's. I mean, we've we've definitely went to bars that have sold and kept names. It's not always the same feel afterwards. It's true. It's very true. But it is what it is. But yeah, so she brings up the fact that, like I said, that you know he he's a bartender and he says you know he could make a drink, you know, a specific type of drink. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, and the Eli tells him, well, there's a liquor store, but it's raining. And Sid, you know, he gets real kind of, I mean, he kind of acts like a dick here, you know. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm New Yorker, so I should be afraid of rain. And he, he kind of, like, you're supposed to be making a good impression. It's your first time there with all of your your wife's friends and stuff. And you're kind of acting like a dickhead. A little bit honest. of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, you know, he, he's trying to... He's trying to defend New York, essentially, is what he's doing. You I know? mean, he really was. Uh, but he goes outside and instantly just his foot just slides forward and he goes down into like this split. And dude, it hurt to watch. <laughs> See, and it's funny, though, too, because like. We're 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 making fun of him for being douchey and picking on uh, like defending New York. But we never did anything when Barney picked on Canadians being afraid of the dark. I mean, that was just funny. <laughs> oh, shit. Good times, man. Good times. Um, okay, so this is where I have a, a, an issue with a little bit of the story. Okay. Um, they reveal, because so like he's, he's back in, her, in, the, in the exam room or whatever. Yeah. And, and everything. And they... Eli reveals that he has uh, what he says. He says a gnarly coccyx contusion, which is a bruised tailbone. Oh, shit. Look at you with your fucking research. He I mean, I've I've broken my tailbone before, so I know how that feels. He didn't land on his tailbone. He landed in a split. His butt never hit the ground. Oh, yeah. So that bothers me that that's that's what they diagnose it as in the episode. Well, I mean, then maybe Sid's comment about wanting a second opinion wasn't totally off. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If anything, it would have made more sense if it's like he, uh, you know, ripped his perineum, which is his taint. That would have made more sense to me. You know, you have a torn perineum. (laughs) Listen, I am never going to call it a taint again. I will only now refer to it as a perineum. There you go. Because that sounds way more fucking professional. It is professional. That's the that's the medical term. Yeah. My perineum. <laughs> there you go. There, there's another word out here. Uh, a, a frenellum. Go look that up, folks. Enjoy. Uh, shit. These these are words that I I learn when uh, I'm editing erotic novels. You know, that's how it goes. <laughs> so I will say though, it is. It's at this point though, when I I was finally like, wow, Sid's being a little. 
dick is. <laughs> yeah, man. Because it's it's when like he's like you know you have your your issue here. And Sid's like you know maybe I'll get a second opinion if I wanted my opinion from somebody who just passed the bar like three hours ago. Yeah, and I was like, he's being a little bitch. A little bit, <laughs> really. Kinda, it kind of reminded me of the Thanksgiving episode of Scrubs where JD has the appendix problem. Oh yeah, and he's got to go into surgery immediately, and Turk has to operate on him. Yeah, and JD's like, I don't want him to do it, but it's yeah. not because he doesn't want him to do it; it's because he's afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. I get it, and it's the same thing here. It's not Sid's trying to be a dick because he wants to be a dick. Yeah. His girl's in a whole different area. She's got all these like inside jokes and clickish things going on. He's yeah. he's and jealous and upset. Yeah, he he reveals that he is jealous. Oh you know, yeah, he's like, this handsome guy and all this stuff. And it got me thinking. I I think that this is going to come back at some point. Oh yeah, because of the whole Taylor thing. You know, so this is this is the way I he reveals he reveals this truth right to Hannah about how he feels. And I think that in that moment, Hannah decides if me living out here is making him feel that way, then it's not worth it. And I'm going to move back to you. I think that's when it happens in that moment. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it because I was thinking about this. I was like. If you take the two individually and look at Hannah as opposed to Sid, Sid hangs out with his close group of friends pretty much every day. Yeah. Goes to work, has his life. I'm excluding Taylor for the momentary conversation, but Taylor is included in this as being part of his daily life currently up until he excluded her via text. Yeah. Um, But I'm focusing on the core group at this point, but Taylor is included. So... He wakes up, goes to work, probably talks to Hannah, has his life, goes to bed, and then repeat. She went out to Los Angeles, and granted, I'm not saying she should be a loner who holds up in her apartment, but obviously she has a new group of friends, she's got her new job, a new life out there, she's obviously killing it right now. She's relatively popular, not to mention pretty. So Mm -hmm. obviously guys are going to fucking hit on her and shit. Sid's obviously going to be jealous, and he has every right to be, because up until Jesse had said something, everything he was doing with Taylor was innocent. It wasn't that he, and I don't think he was maliciously trying to, like, flirt with Taylor. I think he was just being a friendly guy, having a nice conversation, making a friend. Yeah, and then making I a think, friend who's going through something similar. Yes, And I think Jesse pointing it out made him feel worse about it than he should. Because, again, it's not like they were trading pictures or sexting each other. They were just talking. Yeah. And I hate when there's, like, that whole, like, guys can't be friends with girls and girls can't be friends with guys because obviously something's going to happen. Yeah. Because it was innocent until Jesse made it more. (laughs) And then Jesse – so, I mean – it just sucks because I can see why Sid would be upset and jealous right now. She's got all these inside jokes. Though, and... just because Sid didn't know that it was more doesn't mean it wasn't more. 100%. I think that's that's the point. I think it was more. I think he, I think that Sid was beginning to have feelings that he just didn't recognize. I, I I'm not saying that's not true. <clears throat> you know, so he, he he wasn't doing it on purpose, but I think that it was leading there. And Jesse unknowingly points it out, you know what I mean? Just just kind of off the cuff. He did, you know, he didn't I really mean, know. He did it as a friend, though. Yeah. He wasn't trying to make Sid feel bad. It was just the yeah. the outcome of it. Mm-hmm. It just happened to be that he was like, hey, you only do this kind of thing when you really like somebody. And he was like, oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. No, it's so, true. I mean, it just it sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Where I was going with that was, though, is that I just, I feel bad for Sid because I can see, having went through something similar, why he would be standoffish and precautious. But he was a little bit of a dick. 
Oh yeah, ab- absolutely. Okay, so here's here's something that I think is inevitable. I, you know, we'll see as the show goes on. You know? Inevitable. Sometimes we think things are going to happen in the show, and they just don't. But I have this feeling that Hannah's going to find out about Taylor. Okay. Obviously, nothing really went on, but it, there was a lot of talking, and I doubt that Sid told Hannah about her. Hundred percent agree. And I think she's going to use. Sid's reaction to Eli against him. You know what I mean? That's I mean, I could 100 percent see that. And and I think then she's going to with that use the fact that because of that reaction, that's why she chose to come back to New York. And she's going to blame him for essentially taking away her life. Pretty much. You know, even though he was chatting up this girl too you know what i mean i mean you're not wrong so but yeah i i don't know, I don't know about all your right. thoughts on all that but that's just, i mean it's something that it, it, it's, it's gonna be a messy situation all the way around yeah it's gonna suck yeah th- i feel like this sid and hannah thing it's going to explode i, re- I really feel like it's going to be nasty at the end I don't know why. Just, that's that's the vibe that I'm getting. I really hope it's not. I hope for the sake of Sid's sanity and shit that it's going to be just a civil. Yeah. You know, we're I mean, not we're not happy anymore. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna explode, and he's gonna turn to Taylor. I mean, yeah, I can see that. I don't know. I, we'll, we'll find out. But let's, let's talk about the know. bread and butter of this episode. Uh, or the, or should we say, the cabbage of this episode? <laughs> the coleslaw. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh man! <laughs> All so, right, so Sophie and Ellen. Before we actually break this part of the episode down, what are your thoughts on cabbage? I'm not a fan. I know you're not. It I'm makes not me not a fan. Yeah. Because I'm not weird on this one. This is where I get like a torn thing. So I hate Brussels sprouts. Yep. I hate cooked cabbage. But I love coleslaw. Interesting. Like, yeah, not a fan. Raw cabbage, I can eat it, but I hate cooked cabbage and I hate Brussels sprouts. <laughs> rip it and sh- was it rip it and share it? Is that what it rip was? Rip it and share, bro. Which <laughs> honestly, so again, because you know we jump around parts of the story. I do love that at the very end of the episode, future Sophie is eating a head of cabbage. <laughs> yeah, she's got the she's got the cabbage with her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so let's talk about let's talk about Sophie and Ellen here. All right, man. So Sophie is super excited. She found a potential job, and you yeah. know it's with at Goliath. Go- at Goliath, yeah. And it's for a photographer, which is right mm-hmm. up her alley. Yep. And so here was my big. And it's thing. an actual job, like a nine to five yeah. job. So that made me laugh. Does nine to five mean I have to wake up at nine, <laughs> or do they want me there at nine? Yeah. And Ellen's like. They they want you there at nine, and she's like, oh, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, what? It's like how? Like obviously she has never had a nine to five job in her I mean, life. I've never it's, technically had a real nine to five job, but yeah, but you've had a quote unquote nine to five job. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you understand that <laughs> nine to five means <laughs> those are the hours that you are at work. Like you get that. I just. I couldn't believe that when she was like, is that supposed to be the time I wake up or get to work? And I'm like, it's not called noon, honey. It's true. Okay. uh, Before that even happened, I want to mention something because it made me laugh every single time that it happened. As soon as Sophie walks in, she slaps a sandwich out of Ellen's hand. Dude. So (laughs) when she did that, I had real vibes back to the best burger in New York. Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, no, mine was the other one where he, uh, it's a burger one, but it's where Mar- Barney Oh, it's the where it's the, where he thinks Sam. Wendy poisoned him. Yeah, that one. That's yeah, the yeah. one that, that I went to. I was like, Barney just slapping a burger out of Marshall's hand. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I went to the best burger in New York where they're like, every time like I would go to eat a burger. She wasn't allowed to. Yep. But allowed. it just made me laugh because yeah, Ellen put this great sandwich together and she's singing about it, which gave me Scrubs vibes. 
Mm -hmm. Ooh, chicken salad. Yeah, but I feel like that's it's also kind of martialish too. You know what I mean? I you're not wrong. He sings like everything. But yeah, this yeah. fucking Sophie smacking it out of her head, and Ellen's just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it's like you could have just asked me to set it down. <laughs> Listen, I would have put that sandwich back together and just ate it. So would I. Yeah. Not all of it hit the floor; like most of it landed on the counter. Fuck that! I mean. Just walk around that counter and pick it up off the floor. <laughs> Brush it off, you're good to go. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, man, I was like, what a way to enter. You just like walk in and wham. Yep. Yep. That's how you start the episode, man. Dude, I'm yeah. gonna do that the next time I come to see you. I'm gonna just smack whatever food's in your hand out of it. Well, depending on what it is, is whether or not you get a kick in the balls. <laughs> oh no, no, no. You just walk around the counter and pick it up, bro. That's I mean still if it's an El Nino burrito. That thing might explode. Too fucking bad. I'm just saying it might explode, and then I can't. It's 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 kind of irreparable at that point. So you know what I thought about doing, by the way, just to be really funny tonight when we recorded. Hmm. So you remember back when we originally started off the ropes? I always used to have like a donut in front of me. Yeah. So clearly, I've got the M and M's tonight. I thought about taking a very small sliver of your birthday cake. And just like cutting a very small piece off, and then when we were recording, like be like, hmm. and when you were like, "What are you eating?" I was gonna be like, "What's left of your birthday cake?" Did you already eat the the piece I left for you? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I ate it when I got home from taking you home that night. <laughs> and yours That's went fair. right in the freezer. Like it, as soon as I got home, I grabbed yours and put yours in the freezer, just like I said I was going to. Excellent. Thank. I did get a birthday wish, by the way. I did get a birthday wish on uh, on one of the one of the episodes. Yeah. Uh, Dave Mullen229 said, happy birthday, Josh. And then said, I never considered the donor angle. Remember when we talked about the possibility of the father being any of them, just having been a donor from, you know, instead of her being with them. Yep. Uh, and he said, uh, totally opens up so many more possibilities for twists and turns in the story. I always thought Jesse was too obvious and that it would probably end up being Sid or Charlie in the end. Still too early to tell. But so far, they're telling a great story. I agree. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there. Because uh, thank you for the happy birthday wish. <laughs> yeah, at this point, we're like a week out yeah. from his birthday. Yeah, almost, yeah. But, I mean, by the time this goes up, it'll be over a week, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Did you uh, have a good birthday before we continue talking about the story? I did. I had an excellent birthday. Do anything fantastic. fun? You know, hung out with some pretty cool people. You know, did some did some adult things. You know. You know. <laughs> Not with me, though. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Just put that out there. Hey, you know, to each their own. Uh, all right, so we find out that Sophie does get the job. Yeah. Um, we also find out that apparently she gets her physicals at Costco. Like, what? I see, and I was trying to figure out how that one works. because don't think that not works. Doctor at Costco. I, I think it's just some random guy that she doesn't realize isn't a doctor. I thought about that. <laughs> Because I was like, there's not doc. Because like, at least at Walmart, there's like the the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, I mean, they could half ass a fucking yeah. physical if they really wanted to. I think um, so. But I was like, <laughs> who the fucking Costco would be doing that? And I'm like, I wonder if somebody there is like, yes, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'll see you here in a month. Yep. Snap the glove. Uh, we also find out that apparently Sophie takes a comedy self-defense class called Improv Maga, and that was incredible. I, that, see, this one gave me real Hi, My Mother flashbacks, because yeah. I thought of the, the Funk Maga. Band. Maga. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, I thought about the, the, the Funk The band. Funk, the whole Funk, and nothing but the, the funk. funk. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah I improv Maga. Shit. Improv Maga. I love that they're they're slipping in little things here and there, you know, as the show continues forward. They're it's really... small character development, and I love it. Yeah. You know, it's not like a TV show that's going to give you three seasons of character development, and then all of a sudden you find out when they get re renewed for a fourth season, they're going to fire seven of their fucking people. And now you're like, well, that was pointless. Two that's true. Of which, two of which... We're becoming major fucking characters in the show. There it is, folks. This is different show talk. We're going to start our new uh, show, Last Call in Metropolis. Uh, uh, this is the Last Superman Call in Smallville. Whatever. They're not in Metropolis in that I, show. I don't. Well, I haven't watched it. 
I watched. So the first, ask some questions, I, motherfucker. I watched like the first two episodes. I think I don't know. <laughs> I digress, but yeah. Um, I I mean I don't know. I want to get my physical at Costco. No, me either. Me either. Uh, all right. So Ellen and Sophie decide to walk to work together, and we get the return of rich city bitch Ellen. Dude, this I time love featuring Sophie. It was a good one. And she even has a little part in it, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. They got, like, free hot dogs. So I really hope that this comes back again periodically. Maybe even, like, once a season would be hilarious. Could be different people. Maybe it's, like, maybe it's rich city bitch Charlie or something, you know. Or poor poor city city. bitch Charlie. I hope it stays Ellen, but I hope that we get the cameos with other people. I think having like doing it like once with it where it's somebody else, but it's not specifically rich city bitch. It, like they change it, but they do that same type. That of would be fair. Scene, that I could that I, I could get behind. I think would be kind of depending on what they do. It could be funny. Um, like I said, I situation. thought it was really funny. They get free hot dog. Mm-hmm. They see randomly some guy getting gurney down the street, which I yeah, thought was weird. Yeah, because they say uh, in the song, it's like he almost died or something yeah, like that. But yeah. the ambulance wouldn't have been parked or parked that far away where they had to wheel the guy down the street. Yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay, but whatever. <laughs> but then they go to work together, and I was like, man. I was like, I thought back to myself. I'm like, man, I wonder what working with my best friend would be like. And then I remember we did work together. And it was not the best of experience, but it wasn't the worst experience in my life either. It's true. It didn't, uh, it didn't help that we also lived together at the time. Oh, yeah. No, we just didn't get any time apart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, my favorite moment of us working together will forever be the morning after St. Patty's Day. Oh, dude. That's an amazing... I got, that's a, that memory will be in my head forever. Like, I don't give a shit, like, what else happens that, like, we could have been at work and had, like, a celebrity walk in. Day after St. Patrick's Day would still be my favorite day. It's fair, because it was, it was a good time. It was definitely Great a good time. time. <laughs> uh, all right, so, Sophie quickly learns that Ellen didn't actually give her a recommendation. Oh. And she gets real upset by this. Which I thought was kind of stupid. I'm like... <laughs> First off, if you use somebody's recommendation to get a job. Well, here's the thing. Ellen says at first, she says she forgot. Okay, sure. Be a little bit miffed that she, she, you know, fell through on what she said she would do. But you still got the job. Well, that's what I was going to say. She got the job on her own merit. And as far as Sophie knew at that moment, it wasn't Ellen doing it on purpose. You know, we find out later that she purposely didn't give the recommendation. But Sophie doesn't know that at this moment. No. So, like, I feel like Sophie kind of blows it out of proportion for too long. Oh, 100%. You know, like, I get being upset at first. But, like, get over it at that point. You know, you got the job. That's, like, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, see, I I went the other way with it. Because I was, like, I understand Ellen... Kind of not wanting to put her her neck. Oh on. yeah, the, absolutely. Like, I understood why, especially because <coughs> we mentioned it. She didn't even know what a nine to five was. Well, and, and Ellen mentions that too. Yeah, and I was like, I mean, that's a fair statement right there. Like, you didn't even know what the fuck a nine to five was. Like, don't yeah. don't hate. Yeah, and then the other part of it that I'm like, where it's you had said this too. She still got the job, mm-hmm. which means she was qualified. Yeah, for the job. All you had to do was be like, okay, well, I'm sorry you didn't want to work together. You're still friends. You're still working together. Mm -hmm. You got the job on your own at that point, honey. You didn't need somebody to fucking hold your hand. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, at first, as far as she knew, Ellen just forgot. Yeah. She could have just gotten over it it, really easily. And she just could have, but didn't. Shoulda, coulda, didn't. Shoulda, (laughs) coulda, pull those red cowboy boots off because you ain't pulling them off. Ain't pulling them off. Uh, so Ellen's boss, well, I guess technically b- both of their boss. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, it's both of their bosses now. Uh, teams them up. Uh, and, you know, obviously Sophie's not too thrilled about this uh, for what he's calling the cabbage account. Yeah, but I'm see, I'm really bored by that name, so I'm going to need you to spice it up. Can you call it the Ninja Report? Sure. We'll call it the Ninja Report. 
Okay. <laughs> it would have been kind of cool if they did just call it something. Dude, else that would have been. So here's the only thing that made me laugh about this was is I'm like, so Sophie got hired as a photographer. So essentially, she photographed Cabbage and got paid for that. Pretty much. And then well, Ellen comes. She also photographed people because they show in the slideshow there's like people. I assume that I mean, she took those pictures. I, I I mean, you're not wrong. She probably did. But still, though, the yeah. cabbage is the focus. Mm-hmm. The focus point. You got to yeah. focus on that cabbage. Yeah. Whether it be red cabbage or green cabbage, because there's no other kind. Fair. Okay. And I'm I, like, sure. okay. That's why at the end of the episode, like, I highly agreed with the kid. You know, so future Sophie's like, oh, you know, like, and then all of a sudden we turned around and it's like, and it's everywhere, here. literally every everywhere. single person. There's people in cars just holding heads of, of cabbage. It's and just like what made me, you know, so this one made me think of a movie reference at this point, because he goes, he goes, and that's really what you're going with is that everybody just all of a sudden had cabbage. And she goes, well, that's how I remember it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ha, belly girl. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody was just dancing on a fountain. That's how I remember it. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, that scene, that that end scene with her, it just it just harkens back to Ted and how he's a very unreliable narrator, and it's just showing that obviously so is Sophie at this point, in in her own ways. I mean, you're not wrong. It's I mean, especially because it's it's bias based at that point. Like, yeah, you I know, mean, I mean, you're talking almost thirty years. You know, for Ted, it was 30. For Sophie, it's 28, 27 years or whatever. Yeah. You know, sh- shit falls away from your brain. Okay. Kind of time. So hold on, because I'm going to parallel this for a second. I, Tell me about the time you triple insane moonsault jumped, Josh. I, I mean, I'll always remember that. I almost died. Yeah, but, <laughs> but tell me. Tell the fans watching this about that experience for a second. I set up a chair, I set up a ladder, I jumped onto the chair, onto the ladder, and then tried to jump backwards to do uh, a moonsault, okay? And then I almost died. Almost died. Now, let me tell you from what I saw from my experience. (laughs) There was a chair, there was a ladder, there's Josh that runs up onto the chair, jumps off the chair and onto the ladder, tries to do a moonsault, and then fucking croissant folds himself, and and I go... I go, oh, fuck, my best friend is dead. I mean, I feel like I said that almost that exact thing. I just 100%. I didn't say the croissant. I, I feel like the one, because <laughs> you couldn't see the croissant part because you were the oh, croissant. I could feel it, though. <laughs> I feel like if I was going to try to do a better example of that, I should have used the uh, the 12-foot ladder example. The body splash. Oh, I mean, that's the thing. It's like those moments. Those are clear in my mind. I don't think this moment is obviously clear in her mind. What I was trying to go with was that the excitement sometimes overclouds the way we see things. Oh, I wasn't excited about it. Those are times I almost <laughs> died. I was excited when you didn't land on me with a body splash, but not because you crashed and burned. Like I, I both like one of those times I thought I broke my neck, the other I thought I broke my back. Luckily, did not happen either. But oh, pro- both of those probably uh, assisted in my neck and back problems that I currently have. Just saying, it's like it's how in, we roll. In my head, we used to be much bigger celebrities than we yeah. actually See, were. That is the that is the. The, the example that you should have used. <laughs> That's fair. Fine. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Though, Exploited, honestly, deleted I, the rest of that. I never thought of myself as a celebrity because almost nobody ever came up to me. No. They constantly came up to us. No. And they were like... They constantly came up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they were like, it's John. It's Johnny and his Storm. Brother. And that other guy whose name I don't know. That's exactly how it went a lot of times. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Come on, bro. That's how I remember it. <laughs> you know, what's really sad is that I still go places today and I get, oh, my God, hey, you're Johnny Storm. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm like, how do you know who I am? Nobody knows Scotty Mac. No. Nobody knows nobody knows me. Just doesn't happen, folks. I mean, nobody remembers that other guy either. That uh That's true. That little red riding hood trash can church punk. It's true. Nobody does. Uh but yes, we should probably get back to some how about your father. We're you know, we're in the midst of this. We're getting we're almost done with it. (laughs) It's true. I mean, pretty much, I mean, that side of the story, I mean, we talked about it. It's But we didn't. We missed a whole big chunk where uh, during the presentation. I, Sophie, you're not wrong. Sophie, that pisses me off in this scene. Because she could have just kept her mouth shut, just done what she needed to do, got through the presentation, and then had it out with Ellen afterward. But no, could've. she has to do it right there. In front of everybody and almost, well, I mean, we find out that later that he wasn't going to fire Ellen, but that very easily could have happened. Well, and see, that's the thing that I thought was weird is that they were going to fire Ellen and not no, the girl that they no, just he, hired. No, he wasn't going to fire Ellen. Well, he no, said, but I mean, like, in 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 he, Sophie's mind. In Sophie's mind, yeah. Because I'm like, I'm like, you know, in her mind, it shouldn't have been, oh, they're firing her. It should have been, oh, God. Are they gonna fire me? Yeah, you just got hired, and you're the one causing all the problems. So clearly, yeah. And it's like what she did to Ellen, this person that she considered a friend. Was I mean, like I like I said before, you know, I I, I get why Ellen did what she did because Sophie's never really shown herself to be super trustworthy when no. it comes to stuff like that, you know. Um but I also understand why that would hurt Sophie's feelings. I get it. But again, you don't you don't risk both of your jobs no. to to hash it out in front of the freaking literally the, the people who you work for. Right. Like that's just that's just ridiculous. And that's that's to me shows Sophie's never had a real job because well, just not, I mean, she, that's not shit you do. They pretty much said during this episode, too, that Sophie mm-hmm. never had she'd pretty much always done her own thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I, I understand that. She's the freelance photographer. She did this, that. Yeah. But I'm like, how did she keep consistent money? Because even freelance photography, like, you get paid once, but you don't always get paid again after that. Yeah. So, yeah, like, know. what are you doing to constantly be making money? Are, and I hate to say it. Like, <laughs> never mind. Maybe she was going along with uh, Vale and selling some blood. I mean, yeah, we'll go with that because that is definitely more family friendly than what I was gonna say. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think she would do what you are going at. I, I was, I, I was she's not saying, that kind of person. She's like, not. So, Sophie isn't that kind of person Good at all. Val is though. Val would be like feet finder. I mean, I could see her being like, okay, you want to pay me? I could see that theoretically. Whether she would do it or not, I don't know. But I just don't buy for a second that Sophie would. No, I don't think Sophie would either. I think she. Would I still. I think that this little blood, fight though. between the two of them is it's yeah. stupid. Yeah, those I mean, two didn't did. need tension in their friendship. There did not need to be that dynamic. But they they resolved it. That's the nice thing. It's they all did. fully resolved uh, by the end of the episode. So um, here's my thing. They, though. they they both stand up for one another. They did to, to the boss, which I love. And then we get Jesse running in like a crazy person at the end of that. Well, scene. hold on, because I want to I want to get to something before we talk about Jesse running in, because I want to talk about that, too. And that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So when Sophie walks in and she's trying to, like, stand up for Ellen. Yeah. The boss reveals that he wasn't going to fire her. He was going to have her a wellness check. done. Yeah. Yeah. He was conducting a wellness check. And I'm like, for what, though? Well, he says, um, I, you know, when he says t- he was, he's considering firing Sophie, he's like, I'm considering firing you for taking my one of my best employees and making her all weird. Like, she's acting not normal. So he he's obviously <laughs> he's concerned that something's going on. But I'm wondering Ellen. if like wellness check meant like drug tests. Maybe could be drug tests, could be a mental health check. Maybe it could be it could be any of those. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, crazy. <clears throat> And then, like you said, Jesse comes running in, and he's like, I love you guys, goodbye. Yeah, I'm gonna die. And I was just like, <laughs> damn. Yeah, and he, he looks insane. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good look for Jesse. It's definitely one of those moments, though, where I was like, 
Goliath has security, though. We know this. Yeah. So where the fuck was security? Yeah, one, how did he get in there? And two, how did he know that they were in that office? Well, I'm assuming he got up there and was just running around until he found them. Oh, maybe. In my mind, yeah, he's running around like a crazy guy, like, have you seen Ellen? Where's Ellen? And people are just like... <laughs> For those of you listening, that's John just pointing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's over there. Yeah. Uh, I could see that's that. True. Yeah. Right. So, like, this episode I thought was very interesting because, like we said, it started off right jumping right into the into the yeah. storylines, and it finishes that way too. Like, we never get that. F- Really, we never get the full group like at the bar type of scene. Like nope. te- technically, Ellen and uh, Sophie are at the apartment in the, but like they're just there. It's they're, they don't even yeah. need to be. And they there. don't even know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, he, exactly. Sophie's like, I don't understand this, and Ellen's like, Look, just act like you care. Exactly. Like, so like, act they, like you understand. They could have not been there, and it would have been fine for the. Would have been fine. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I think it would a better ending would have been would have been. Val, Sid, and Jesse, or Val, Jesse, and Charlie still dealing with the repercussions of him going to die. And then, like, they did, like, a, a split scene where it's, like, like a split screen. And on the other side, it's Ellen and Sophie. And, like, they're clearly at, like, Ellen's place. And, like, they're having, like, a glass of wine. And she's like, so that's what it feels like to put my first day of work in? Oh, what a crazy day it's been. Yeah, that would have been cool. And then, like, and then, like, she's like, oh. I wonder what everybody else is up to. Let's go to Pemberton's. And then, like, they leave. And then, clearly, like, Val and uh, Charlie leave. And that's when he chokes and then runs out the door. Yeah, that could have been interesting. Yeah. But they didn't. (laughs) No, I mean, it's because it's one of those things where, at this point, they still have to have all five people together, like, all the time. And I'm like, come on. Even How I Met Your Mother got away from that at points. It's true. It's true. Uh... Okay, so I I have some questions, but I want to first get your thoughts on the overall episode. I mean, I liked this episode. It just, it felt, because you know how, like, certain episodes, like, they're clearly, like, this is the story arc, and then there's, like, the ones that just follow the timeline because they still need to continue things on. This felt like one of those continue on ones, but with a little bit of the arc in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't feel like it was definitely a, like, you have to watch this episode to understand the season. But yeah, really, it just sets. Yeah, it sets up some stuff. Like it sets up Sophie working at Goliath. Definitely it's, sets up some shit with Sid and Hannah. Sid and Hannah stuff. The Charlie Vale. So here's something. Okay, this is one of the first times that Vale and Charlie have a storyline together. Really, since the split. You're right. Like, and it makes me wonder: Is this? Are they? Did they do this just out of convenience, or did they do it to kind of become the beginning of something, showing them together See, again? I didn't even think of it like that. In my mind, it was convenience of putting them in a storyline together, because otherwise they would have had to have come up with one more story for someone to be doing. Yeah. Because, I mean, clearly, you were going to have Ellen and Sophie, because they're working <clears throat> together, yeah. and then Sid goes out to L.A. for Hannah, which means, what do you do with the other two? It's like you would have had to have either had, either, yeah, done it the way they did it or had four storylines. Yeah. Like, you could so have had, you, like, it was just convenient. you could have had, you know, Vale and Jesse and then Charlie doing something or Charlie and Jesse and Vale doing something. Because but, at yeah. the same instance, you can, you can use that logic to say you never technically see them alone together during this their storyline. It's true. Jesse's always there. Yeah, but it was nice to see them together. And like, oh yeah, and I mean, they still get along cordially. Like, they oh yeah, still, you know, yeah, very it's well. What it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we kind of, I kind of brushed on this. Now that Sophie is working for Goliath, do you think she'll run into Barney again? No, because as we know right now, he's still working for the bank. I think he's. I'm. I, from the way I took it, I think he rose up the ladder in Goliath. I mean, he could have. Because, like, most of those people are gone because of the sting operation. You know what I mean? I guess I, only I think time he, will tell. 
I have a feeling he might be like one of the top guys in Goliath. Not well, just what, the bank, but in Goliath. What if it's not Barney she runs into then? What if Sophie runs into an issue with one of her pitchers and needs legal assistance and then runs into Marshall? I mean, that's interesting. Um, I, I mean, really, it was just the, the Goliath thing, but you think like some sort of legal thing with Goliath? Or needs just him? needing, like, maybe she's doing something for Goliath and somebody threatens a lawsuit and, like, they give her their legal department, like, go see our legal person, and it's it's Marshall. I mean, that would be interesting. That would be interesting if Marshall Oh, no, though. He legal. wouldn't be, though. Because, no, he's a judge. He's Judge point, Harrison right? at this point. Yeah, I think he's a judge at this point. Shit. Yeah. I think it's more likely that she would run into Barney again. And it would make more sense <laughs> because she's already met him, and I'm pretty sure that... The showrunner said that it's not the last time we'll see him. Oh, I'm sure it's not, especially so. considering, I mean, they're putting Goliath in the show. I just kind of want to see some other people pop up, and I was really hoping for yeah. Marshall. Oh, I mean, I, I would like to see them pop up in general. Uh, maybe they just come back and, like, they check on the apartment or whatever. It could be almost anything. But I think when it comes to Sophie specifically, I'd like to see her run back into him. Fair. Yeah. Because they could have a nice little, like, oh, hey, yeah, like we said before, you're the girl who ran into my car. You're working here now? <coughs> yeah, I think that could be interesting. Um, and then my other questions are about Sid and Hannah. Uh, again, kind of talked a little bit about this before. Um, do you think Sid's jealousy will come back up when Hannah inevitably learns about Taylor? Because I feel like it's got to happen. She's got to learn about her. I don't point. know that he'll get jealous. No, 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 no. Not that he'll get jealous, but that his jealousy will come back. Like, it will be brought up by Hannah. Like, that, that, the fact that he was oh, j- all jealous about Eli, that 100%. that will come back up. 100% she's going to use that against them. Yeah. Because it's going to be, oh, so you could go off, talk to somebody, but I couldn't have friends. Yeah. Even though it could be argued that she's way closer with, and I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to cause an argument here or a big discussion. All I'm saying is it could simply be argued that her closeness with douchebag doctor guy was way different than Taylor. Honestly, I think they're pretty much the same. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm saying it could be argued. The only argument is that one was in person and the other one was on the text. But they're they're essentially the same. As far as we know, because we don't have any other information about whether or not Hannah had any sort of feeling toward this guy. You know what I mean? As far as we know, they were literally the same situation. Friends, and they talked a lot, kind of a thing. Like, they, mm-hmm. they, they, because Sid and Taylor had insight. Like, they were joking about stuff. They were. So, like, I feel Oh, here like we go. I'm going to make a prediction, then, for the show. When the argument happens, you're going to find out that Dr. Eli and Hannah kissed. Ooh, interesting. I'm making that predicament right now. It is June 16th, 2023 at 11 8 p.m. before any of that shit has happened. Interesting. Mark my words. They okay. kiss. They had a moment. Well, I mean, we've still got, sure. well, five episodes left. Five in the season. episodes. I think that they will be done by then. I really do. Um, but maybe they'll surprise us. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and then the other the other part of that was, do you think Hannah will resent Sid because she chose to leave L.A. for him? So here's my big thing. I think that that's how it's going to happen, but I really... I, I've said it a hundred times, and I'm going to say it again. I hate basic TV tropes. I want to see How I Met Your Father break the mold on this one. I want to see a breakup, and I want it to be a mutual breakup. I personally don't want to see them get into a fight. I want to see them be reasonable adults and be like, listen, we got married. This isn't working. You are clearly have a life in Los Angeles. I have a life in New York. They are not meshing well together. It was great while it lasted. If they weren't married, I could see that happening. I mean... It's, it's so much harder. If you're not wrong are. that it's harder, but does it... I mean, here's my question, though. The Does only it really have to be that hard? The only way it's not that it's easy and mutual is if they don't love one another. 
Mm. They both would have to feel that way. True. And I just, I don't know. I mean, maybe that is the case. And maybe that's something that we will find out. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Because obviously it happened to me and it was not mutual. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so it would have to be, again, like I said, they would both have to just want that to end. You know what I mean? In the same moment. Yep. But we'll see, you know, still, like I said, there's still five episodes in the season and, you know, hopefully more seasons to come as well. Uh, But yeah, that is uh, all that I've got uh, for this episode, season two, episode 15 of How I Met Your Father. Uh, Working Girls was the name of the episode. John, where can everybody find you? Ooh, well, hop on over to Twitter. Find me and simply saying J1. Uh, it's you know pretty much where I'm at. If I'm not there, you can hop on over to Facebook. If you really, really want to find me that bad, it's uh, J John Made. Can't miss me. I'm one of a kind. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Boom. What about you, bro? Where are you at these days? All right, you guys can find me on Twitter at Movie Blog Merc. That is the site for my or the Twitter page for my site, Merc with Movie Blog. If you are watching this on the YouTube channel, you are watching it on the Merc with Movie Blog YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you like what you're watching. Smash that subscribe button and click that little bell wherever the fuck it is, man. That is true. And remember mm-hmm. that if you're watching from your mobile device, you can use that little bell to set notifications to let you know when we drop new content. For you, the people. Boom shakalaka. Uh, and if you are listening on podcast form, head over to anchor.fm slash last call H I M Y M and you can leave us a, a voice message over there. We would love we haven't got voice one message. About that. Just it's like you can leave a minute long voice message. You can do multiples. We had a guy who d- did like three oh, minutes yeah, because he had a that. long message. Um we would love to hear any of your thoughts. Just send us your thoughts. We want to hear all of it. Um <laughs> You can leave us comments on the YouTube uh, channel uh, anywhere. We've got a few of those, which is great. And uh, if you are on Apple uh, Podcasts, you can leave us, if you really like what you're listening to, you can leave us a five-star review, and we will read that out on air as well. Uh, it doesn't Spotify, have to be five stars, but we like the five stars. Well, if it's five stars, I'll read it. I ain't reading anything other than that. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, though, it doesn't have to be five stars. You can leave a four if you'd like. Doesn't mean I'm going to read it on air. <laughs> <laughs> you know what uh, you need to do to simplify the end of the episode? You need to get like a, and it, it can run the whole time. You, you could do like a, a news feed. Yeah. And you should just run all like the accounts down there. Like, yeah, I mean. Like Twitter. When when we had uh, when we were using so this is some behind the scenes we're not using Streamyard anymore we're just on Skype and I have to edit that way when we were using Streamyard I could have done that I could have done mm. a a scrolling bottom banner um, but we don't have that option right now uh, unless somebody wants to send me some Kizash uh, cash tag uh, Merc Trader twenty two so that we can afford all that jazz or hit up hit us up on the Patreon hell so, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that too. <laughs> but uh, before we go, also don't forget the Twitter page and the Instagram page at last call H I M Y M. I'm on there uh, at least on the Twitter page fairly regularly. I gotta oh, get on Twitter the, all the time. Dude. I gotta I see get, you all the time posting stuff. I gotta get on the Instagram a little bit more. Uh, I'm real bad about Instagram, uh, even my own personal Instagram. My in my Merc because I have one for for my own. I have a Merc one, that one. And Damn, I'm real bro. bad about it. Yeah, I'm real bad about but it. But he loves Twitter, guys. So I do. So if you want to talk. Twitter's my jam Twitter, lately. Twitter, Twitter is the way to get Josh's attention. Yeah. Again, last call, H-I-M-I-M. Or you can hit him up. Wait, with, wait, wait, wait. What was that again? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I said H-I-M-I-M-I-M. <laughs> I know what I said. Uh, yeah, you guys, you can decipher that however you feel. I'm sure you'll find it at some point. Uh, <laughs> uh, and patreon.com slash uh last call h-i-m-y-m uh and we, yeah <laughs> again we'll do some we'll talk about all kinds of stuff Listen, you know, whatever you want say, you let us know I, I will say it like this i've done some shady shit for money and i'm not afraid to do it again boom there you go folks there it is uh all right so i think that's all i got for him, man what do you got for him you don't have to go home but you can't listen here All right, folks, catch you next time.